In this exercise, we're going to look at a very simple folded tray and sheet metal. We'll be using mitre flange and we'll also look at some edit corner conditions. Okay, once again, I'm starting off in SOLIDWORKS um, 2022, new part, and let's go. In our new part, we're on top plane. We are going sketch, and we'll go with a, a center rectangle, and we call that 500 millimeters by 250 millimeters. We're clicking OK, and then we're going to sheet metal um, base flange tab, where we are leaving it at 6 mil with a K factor of 0 0.5 and a relief radius or ratio of 0 0.5. Okay, so nothing, nothing hard there. Bring it up to our front. Um, for visual, we go plain carbon. <clears throat> okay, so some of these tools across the top, and we have used an edge flange. Now we've used a sketch bend. So we work away through some more of them. We have also used base flange and we've used converted sheet metal. So the next one is a mitre flange. So we click the mitre flange and it's asking us for a plane. It wants to produce a sketch. If we click the side here, click our space bar and we have normal two. So we want to see that. So this opens a sketch so that the mitre flange can follow. So if we click our line, point on the very end of our um, plate, come out and click out. So obviously if you're going to go inward, you click inward. As I said at a later stage, we'll talk about um, machinery tolerances and why you go outward and inward, leg length, bending and folding, calibration, etc. So that being a later tutorial. So we'll mark it in at 100 mil and we'll put our miter at 50 mil. Simple enough, no angles, no anything else. And we're clicking OK. And we close our sketch. As you can see, it has already produced the uh, what it will classify as the miter. So we might as well leave it at our 8mm, we will tell it it's inside. We have a gap distance between our miter edges of 1mm that we will use for um, welding. And we leave our K factor. So up in this top column, it has our sketch. Edge we're applying that sketch to. So if you click the opposite edge, which is this edge here, away from the sketch, it will also add. And there is our miter. So we'll also go down here, click the same, our miter is applied, click the same, our miter is applied. Nice little deep tray. And we click OK. There's a very simple tray. Click the center, normal two, flatten. That is how that tray would look in the flat pattern state if that flat pattern was to be cut. We had said we'd left a one millimeter gap between the mitre, which is this point here, this point here, one millimeter. So obviously the heavier the plate, for a welding purpose, you might add a two or three mil mitre. And that would allow for build through, etc. So, under our sheet metal, we're looking at our corners. So we've closed corner. Now, closed corner allows you to, it all depends the purpose of the part, but if we're doing say um, sheet metal and you wanted to TIG a tight edge rather than fill, you click one side, automatically selects the other side. So this is our butt joint, but we're saying one mil apart, but if we wanted a lap joint, See the way we have our lap joint sitting? If we just click go, see now our lap joint is in there. And that would mean that you just TIG weld one side. So that's one version of the corner. We'll come back to them again. They, uh, they're very handy for sheet metal um, and they have many uses, but it's more on the fabrication side. But it would take a lot of work off of the fabricator if the corners was added correctly. So then just for visual, if you want to weld up the corner, go to welded corner, click your face, 
and you can actually add your weld symbol as well. This is just visual, it just shows that the, the weld is welded and uh, it's sealed across the top. And say if you were trying to present to a client, you know, you could show exactly all the weld features. So that was that one. And we have break corner, trim corner. So this is the same command um, as finish and chamfer and the distances and you just set it and it'll break off a corner. I'm not too sure if it actually will work on this one. We'll just see here now. It does. So five mil chamfer off a corner. We'll have a tusis as well as we're going through. And then the corner relief, if you wanted to pre-drill corners to relieve them, click all corners, comes up, relief type rectangular. As you can see, the preview will show it blown through. Uh, all round. So there's all different versions of these and we will look at them at a later stage as well. So just click. So if you wanted to take the stress and then re-weld it back Sometimes there's areas that you need to do that, sometimes there's not. As you can see, they um, puts a nice little shape in, and that's the corner types. So if we wanted to just go flat pattern, click, file, export the effects, change that to four, you know, save, you know, sheet metal, we have geometry, hidden lines, bend lines, sketches, forming tools, bounds box, and cosmetic trade. So would we say the bend lines? So the geometry is obviously the outside. These are our bend lines here, where we're supposed to bend. And if we say export the effects, now you can see we have our bend lines. The problem with this is if that went to um, cutting at the present moment, those lines will activate the plasma head. So instead of the plasma going around the outside, it can possibly cut through the uh, other sides. Now you can remove entities and you can clean it here and there is other features here as well for a later tutorial. But if we click save, we save it. But then if we click and we go export again and we just save it to new file. Now I click faces, click go, those lines are not included. Now you can go sheet metal and just add the geometry. It'll be the same thing. But when they're not included, it's a safer net that your component will be cut correctly. And that's it for our um, tutorial. Once again, always to show it as a nice isometric. That's it for our tutorial. See you in the next one.